They say that the human brain is capable of learning anything, but it's also capable of forgetting everything the next day. And that is so true if you do not apply what you learn straight away and start practicing. But I have a lovely little exercise I love to do all the time and I want to share it with you. And it's called reteach yourself what you already know. You see, year by year, you should be improving as an artist by gathering information and knowledge year by year. Yeah. Now, even if you forget stuff, it's still in your mind, it's still in your brain, it's just sitting there. You just need to activate it and trigger it off. Now, to do that, what I like to do is I like to find old sketches that I've done in the past, like a year ago, two years ago, three, five years ago max, let's say. And my goal is to observe the sketch and start pinpointing all the mistakes that I was not aware of back then, but I'm aware of now since I've gained the knowledge. Yeah. Now, by seeing and pinpointing these mistakes, what's happening is those mistakes are triggering off the knowledge that you've gathered. Yeah. All the knowledge information that's in your brain sitting there. It gets triggered off. It gets activated. You remember again and you now have to just apply it straight away to your sketch and try to fix it and practice. Right, so I'm going to be demonstrating now with a little sketch that I found, but this sketch is a little bit more extreme. I usually pick an image that I did a year ago or so, but this one, just for the, for this video, I'm picking a really old uh, sketch that I did when I was a beginner, something really extreme where the mistakes are really obvious, just so that you can really understand the concept of this exercise. So let me show you the sketch. Here we go. Check this out. What a masterpiece. I mean, like the girl on the left, that's Cherry. Right, that's one of the first original cherry sketches I did way before I even started this YouTube channel. I was a beginner back here, and uh, I'm assuming already you're scanning this character up and down right now, and uh, you're pinpointing a bunch of mistakes. And believe it or not, you are now triggering off information and knowledge that's sitting in the back of your mind. That's what you're doing right now. So let's break down this character together. So let's take a look at the head. The head shape is massive, it's humongous. It looks like it's going to fall off her shoulders, right? Then you've got the facial features like the lips. I mean, look at them. They look like being stung by a thousand hornets or something. Yeah. And then those eyes. Those eyes look like they're going to pop out of her head or something. It looks like she's seen a ghost or something. Let's go down the body. Now towards, let's say the breast, right? They look like they're big overflated footballs or something. And those arms are too short, too skinny like twiglets. The waist is tiny. It's like three millimeters long or something. And the backside of the hips is not bad. The thigh could have been a bit shorter, um, but the knee all the way down the shin to the foot. Wow, it looks like she's walking on stilts. Right, now that we've triggered off all this information, all this knowledge in our heads, we've activated it. Now what I've got to do is dive in and apply everything and keep it nice and fresh and active in my mind so that on my next sketch, I'll be aware. Let's get started. All right, let's begin by duplicating the sketch so we can have one to work with and one for reference. Now, the first thing I want to do is fix the proportions. So I'm going to dive in and start with the torso. Now, the torso needs to be shortened a little bit. To do that, I'm going to raise the backside up a little bit. And we also need to make the waist a bit wider as well. Now, to get the waist wider, I'm going to arc the back nice and high and then start bringing it out around the hips, around the backside. By raising the arc of the back, you're forcing the waist to be wider. Yeah. Now, let's tone down the head size because that's too big. Let's bring it down. Let's make it a bit smaller three-quarter angle there we go I might need to lower the head a little bit as well so I'm just quickly just select it and bring it down just a little bit about there all right now I usually make the head size a lot bigger than a realistic human head just to make the character look a bit more cute but the sketch below was too much so we fixed the head we've done the torso let's start with the legs now so uh, the knee will be about here as we're gonna roll it uh, under and around like this and over into the hips and notice how the thigh is a lot shorter than the sketch below and a bit thicker as well. Uh, trying to capture the silhouette of this whole character. There we go. All right, let's go down the leg now. Bring out the knee, down the shin. The heel will be about here. And let's roll out the foot. Now, the calf muscle needs to be a lot thicker. And we need to also capture the shape and the form of the lower leg as well. If you notice the sketch below, you can see that it does not have much shape. It doesn't have much form. And you can notice the calf muscle does not really roll out and round and down towards the ankle. It's just not happening on the old sketch. So we fix that. All right, not bad. Next, we need to do the arms. Now, the arms on the sketch below is extended out. It's something that we can't really do on this pose. Uh, so what I'm going to do is, uh, yeah, I'm going to lower down the elbow. So let's say this is the hand. I'm going to lower down the elbow. And then I'm going to raise it back up as it meets the shoulder, just so that I can get the proportion of the arm. You see, because she's tiptoeing and the knees are high up, 
um, if you're to extend the arm, the hand will go past the knee. Yeah. Now, if I wanted the, her hand on the knee and extended, I need to force back, push back the torso so we can get that arm position. Yeah. So uh, this must have been the mistake I did in the past when I, I didn't judge the distance and that's why the arm is so small. All right, so let's uh, add a few features here on the face, just a um, bit of scribbles so I can work with later on. And uh, let's just continue with the rest of the sketch. Let's see, okay, it looks quite good. Let's bring out the other leg here as it meets the floor there, there we go. I'm pushing her more into a side profile angle. Now it looks like she's sitting on a toadstool, a massive one, I'm gonna make a little one. A little toadstool that might represent like some sort of a seat and uh, the ground will be about here there we go and the root of the toadstool a bit of grass and some texture all right okay it's coming along nicely we're fixing all the portions and just add some hair i'm going to give it a little bun i'm not going to have a hair wavy always zoom in and zoom out when you zoom in um you have more control over the little details but when you zoom out, it's an opportunity for you to scan your character and try to observe to see if there's any mistakes. Like I've just noticed now that the chest is too far out. So I'm going to just um, bring it in a little bit. There we go. And uh, fix the arm. There we go. And bring out the breast, make it a lot smaller, a bit more believable. There we go. All right. So always zoom out and pay attention to see if you notice something that you didn't notice before. All right, now we've got the whole silhouette down. I'm just gonna tone it down, make it nice and faint, and let's dive in and let's fix the face now. So the issues we had with the face were the eyes, the lips, and even the nose. I'm gonna start with the eyes. I'm gonna really tone them down a lot and not have them so wide open as well. Let's bring up the eyelids, add some eyebrows. And when I zoom out, take a look at the sketch, you'll notice that the mouth, the shape was like a third of the whole face, you know, it was, it was huge. We need to tone that down. And you'll also notice that the nose doesn't really have much of a nose bridge. That's how I used to draw noses back then. I used to just draw the button nose. So we're gonna add a little nose bridge as well. So I'm gonna give a little cheeky smile and let's tone down the lips as well and bring it down. I mean, there's big lips and then there's that, right? That was just ridiculous. All right, here we go. All right, and uh, let's see, I might even add um, a little mark, little edge there on the corner. Add a little nose, button nose here. I might actually lower that down a little bit. Let's just complete the jaw. So let's bring out the chin. There we go. And square it off here on the side like this and up towards the ear. All right. Little beauty spot. Yeah, I'm going to bring that down a little bit. So I'm just going to quickly just select the nose and the lips because I want the gap between the chin and the lip not to be too far apart. About there. There we go. And now we can just like roll in the nose bridge and fix the nose. So we fix the eyes, we fix the nose, we fix the lips, and also the head shape as well. Let's quickly just oh, do a little pass over of this nose. It's nice and clear for you to see. There we go. Okay. Uh, yeah, so we're gonna make these eyelashes and the irises a little bit stronger. Maybe add some texture like your eyelashes just flicking out a little bit. There we go. All right. And also add a little shadow across as the forehead is casting it. Now her ears are a bit pokey, kind of like my ears. Now there's some features that I like to keep realistic in proportions and um, some features I like to really exaggerate. Most, um, you know, stylized character designers, they usually like to make like really exaggerate features on a female character and make them really look petite, like the nose, the ears, the hands, the feet. They make them like one centimeter long. Um, I, I prefer to keep some features realistic in proportion, in the sense of proportion, and some, you know, and the rest I just like to stylize. Now the ear is one of them, I just like to keep it more realistic in size. Let's add some bangs across her face as it wraps behind her ear like that. Add a little bun, a little high bun like this. There we go. And uh, let's add some texture. Bump, 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 bump. All right, there we go. Okay, so we're done with the face. Now, what we have to do now is just go along the blueprint below. That's why it's important to have a nice strong foundation of a sketch below. So you can just trace it. Notice how the curve goes around the back of the head, into the neck, round the back, into the arc, round the, the hips, around the backside. It's like a never ending curve. Yeah. It's really, it gives a nice, it's nice to add rhythm and flow through your pose. It makes the character look really appealing. And also notice how 
where the skin meets the surface of the toadstool is flat. So we're introducing gravity, yeah, as it's pulling the, the weight of the character, it's squashing down against the surface of the toadstool. Little details like that make it look a bit more believable. Um, let's see. Okay, looks good. Let's start off with the calf muscle now as it rolls round and down towards the heel. There we go, down to the ball of the foot. And let's start the knee now and uh, bring it down the shin all the way as it meets the foot here as well. And I just now noticed that the calf muscle is a little bit too thick, so I need to tone that down just a little bit. Now what I like to do is, is I like to bring in the knee just a little bit so that we can get uh, the, the, the right size. So I'll just bring it in a little bit and then just, uh, I'm just raise that shin and do it again. And just bring it down like that. There we go. Nice. Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay, it's coming along nicely. It's going to add some toes. Just basic little scribble there. I'm not going to put detail. Let's draw the other leg coming down as it meets the ground behind this leg as well. I'm pushing her more into a side profile. Yeah, I think it suits it more. Uh, let's bring out the shoulder, the tricep, the bicep. And I've just now noticed that the head is a bit too high up. So I'm going to have to select it. So I'm just quickly just do that now. There we go. All right, just bring it down just a little bit. I might even tilt it just a little bit for personality. And just erase away that little mark right there. Okay, so uh, let's add the neck. Let's roll out the breast here. The curves round. Like that. Let's fix the arms. Let's uh, draw the top part of the arm. And then we've got the hand just resting there on the knee. I'm going to add some fingers as well. I might have the fingers just like curling inwards or something like that. Something, something basic. All right. All that's left to do now is add the outfit, which is going to be a nice little t shirt and uh, these little gym shorts. Um, draw the toadstool fix the fingers and maybe add some shadows and stuff and we're done. Is that correct? There? Yeah. All right. Um, let's see, what should we do? Let's start with the, um, let's do, let's do the hand actually. Yeah, let's do the hand. So I'm just going to quickly just erase it away a little bit. And then, uh, I'm just going to have one finger poking out just a little bit about here the other in, maybe one more out again, and maybe even, uh, add a little thumb right there. All right, there we go. Just erase this away and add some shadows in the back of the arm. Add a little t-shirt, a little fold here of the fabric. There we go. All right, nearly done. All we've got to do now next is the gym shorts. So let's roll it around the thigh and over the hips. Typical little gym shorts with a little stripe that goes around like this. There we go. Just like that. And let's also shade it in as well a little bit. So do 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 Let's also add some shadows under the arm, across the belly like this. There we go. So we're nearly done. I um, just want to also erase away these little marks here on the leg. There we go. And all that's left is the toadstool and we're done. Now take your time when you're doing this exercise. I'm just rushing this so that the video won't be too long. But you take your time and practice. Um, and two things I want you to take away from this little exercise to really understand it two things. The first one is really understand why we choose an old sketch. The reason why we pick an old sketch, the purpose of it is just to refresh your memory. That's it. Yeah. Since you gained um, knowledge, since you've improved since back then, yeah, by scanning the character and observing it and looking for the mistakes, those mistakes are there just to trigger off and refresh your memory. That's it. Then point number two is to apply it. Yeah reteach yourself what you already know. But when I mean apply it, I'm not talking about, you know, let's just go and fix the sketch for the sake of it, yeah, or make the sketch look pretty. That's not my main purpose. The main purpose is to practice, yeah? Practice developing your skills, fixing your common mistakes, anything that's, you know, based around what you've learned since then, yeah? Apply it and just practice and above all, to gain the experience to memorize your common mistakes as well so that it stays in your mind. It's a muscle memory exercise, yeah? So that the more consistent you are working on your common mistakes, the more aware you will be. So that when you go off to do your next sketch, and even if you make the same mistake again, that's okay, yeah? Because at least this time, because of the experience through this exercise, you're gonna look for it. I make mistakes all the time. I might make the arms too long or too short, same with the legs as well. And whenever I finish a sketch, I always take, you know, take a little step back, I scan it, I might see the lips were too high up. I want to bring it down a little bit so there's a bit of a gap between the nose and the lips. There we go. 
and um, then I'll go down the body, you know, I'll check all the features, the head size, I'll go down the body towards the arms, and I'm checking the arms and I'm like, whoa, are these the right size? Why am I actually looking for the arms though? That's the question right there. Why am I looking to see if the portions of the legs are there? It's because I've done the same mistake so many times, yeah? And by doing this exercise, we teach myself, I'm gaining experience to be aware of it, that this is a mistake I constantly do. So once I reach the arms, I'll scan it, check it. All right, the arms are okay, great. If it's not, let's fix it, yeah? You're aware this time. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed this little video. Um, this was a ton of fun to create for you and uh, this is something that really helped me to develop my skills. So I hope it really does help you out. Apply it, let me know your feedback in the comment section and above all, have fun. I'll see you on another video. Bye-bye for now. Thank you.